Well, hello there, and welcome to a video that I did not want to make. <laughs> But it is always wonderful to see you, and I hope you are doing well. Jelly's also happy to see you, too. So, a bit of an update. A bit of an update on kind of where I've been and where I'm going because I am going into surgery. As you guys know, I have been dealing with um, some additional health issues over the course of this year that have really put me in a bad position. That is going to require surgery. And with somebody with a neuromuscular disease like myself, that poses additional risks and recovery time. And that is incredibly stressful, especially with season nine around the corner. But I got to say, the hermits are amazing and incredibly accommodating. And uh, just I can't thank them enough uh, for all the support they've given. And of course, you guys. So... Yeah, this is this is going to be rough, but it is <laughs> something that may get us back on the right course, get us back onto feeling good, getting back into the things that we love doing. And that would be wonderful. My coach, my swim coach, my crazy swim coach back in the day used to always say life is 10 percent. What happens to you? 90 percent how you react to it. So in this case, I'm really trying to stick to I could take this really poorly or I could take this as this is an opportunity to get better. And I'm really, really trying to do that one. Um, but it is going to require quite an effort to recover. With somebody with a neuromuscular disease, there are complications with anesthesia, with surgery and things like that. In my previous surgeries in, in 16 and 15, plans were introduced into there to try to mitigate the risks that I had in the past. I had some wild times in the past. People in red vests coming and running. Ugh, we don't want to deal with that. So what they've devised is staying on the ventilator a little longer and being excavated one to two to three days afterwards to try to give my body a chance to recover, get breathing again, get feeling good again instead of immediate excavation in the PACU and then having those red vest people running. We don't want that. So yeah, that is the plan. But if we uh, get in the old DeLorean <laughs> to the time frame of around spring to early summer and... I go in for a tube change. With the complication of a neuromuscular disease, you might have to have a feeding tube. My feeding tube is a J tube and it needs to be changed periodically. Um, so they, they pull it out and they reinsert another tube. And this can be done in the office. It was not a great change out. I was not with my normal doctor and you know they did their best, but they also caused a bit of trauma to the site. They couldn't get it in. They were really jamming it. And there was a silver nitrate issue and it, it was a rough one. So fast forward to now a couple weeks out, I am really noticing an increase of drainage around the site. I'm noticing some blue, which I have never seen in all my years of having a J-tube. I have never seen blue. <laughs> So all these years, I've never seen that. And I'm feeling a little bit run down. We call and they're like, okay, you're chronically ill. A small breeze will knock you off the shelf that you live on. You know, you, you live on a fine line. Blue is synonymous with pseudomonas. And pseudomonas is a very opportunistic um, bacteria that adheres to medical devices and things along those lines. And you need to come in the emergency room and have this checked out immediately. So we go into the emergency room. Caseloads are very low with the virus. So things are chill. Nobody's threatened my life in the waiting room, which is a plus. I'll tell you that. Um, we go back. They, they see us fairly quickly. And the doctor's like, you know, you're not mounting a fever. You don't have like, like, like signs of like major infection. And I'm like, okay, well, my symptoms are, you know, I'm super run down. I'm super tired. And there's this blue. And he's like, okay, and I get that, you know, it looks okay. And I, I think it'll be fine. I think this'll, this'll, this'll just pass. And I'm like, okay, you know, I do have a swag in the build and I do have an off road wheelchair that's calling to me. So, okay, I am going to take your word for it. Fast forward now a few weeks, the blue is ever increasing and I'm feeling more and more run down. And this is in the midst of season eight. You know, we're trying to build the wagons and stream and I just struggle. And one day I am on my off-road wheelchair and I'm bouncing around and I'm just like, man, my head is killing me. This is not great. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm going to head home and maybe rest a little bit. I get on my bed and I am like, oh my gosh, I have an enormous abscess and that site just blew up. It is not good. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll take some of these antibiotics that I have on hand for infections and we'll just see what happens. Maybe it'll be better in the morning. Nope. Unaffected. I was worse in the morning. It was not getting any better. Trying to avoid going to the hospital at all costs. We were in the height of Delta. My hospital said, don't come. Don't come. Go to this hospital. They have 
they have fewer patients, you'll be able to be seen faster. And I'm like, okay. So we go to this hospital, they check me for a fever at the door and they're like, perfect, no fever, you can go right in. And I'm like, what happens if I had a fever? Oh, you go over with the suspected virus cases. But but, but I definitely don't have the virus. This is, this the, the fever would come from this. And they're like, like, oh, oh, I don't want to get this on top of that. That would be a nightmare. So we go in there and then we see that they, they separate like virus cases and non-virus cases with a rope, which I joked as the, uh, the N95-1000 um, biocontainment rope. The nurses thought that was quite funny. They did not like the rope. Uh, it was a sore subject with them, apparently. <laughs> you gotta give the healthcare workers a major shout out. They deal with a lot already and with everything else. Oh, mad respect. But anyway, they took took me in. They 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 checked everything. They're like, yeah, this major abscess. They poked it. I was I was screaming, and they scanned it and everything. And they wanted to send me to my other hospital again, but they were under absolutely no diverts. So the emergency room doctor was like, I'll do it. And he cuts it open, drains it, swabs it for cultures, and then starts me on antibiotics. And then this time, I may not be mounting a fever, but I have every side effect of a fever. I'm shaking via rigors. It is. It is, it is rough. But at that time, because everything was so crazy, he gave me the option is, I'd like to keep you, but I fully understand if you want to leave and recover at home. I can trust that you will know what's going on enough to be safe. And I'm like, I'm taking that option and I am out of here. I got a swag in the build. Um, so we go home. I'm, I'm, I'm still feeling pretty rough, but a little bit better since they started antibiotics, opened up the abscess and stuff like that. That helped a little bit. Find out later that the uh, culture came back. It was pseudomonas after all. You remember callback, June, emergency room? Um, so it turns out it was. And so yeah, um, the antibiotics that I was on were ineffective against it. And they, <laughs> So they go on this course of trying to find the right ones that I can actually take. And eventually they're, they're at a brick wall. They, they call ID and infectious disease is like, we can see them in a month. And I'm like, Ooh, that's a long time. So they're like, just hang tight. And then I get way worse. They're like, Nope, you're going to the emergency room. We go to the emergency room. This is still an absolute nightmare. We waited like six hours in the waiting room. We were eventually in the emergency room for like two and a half days before I got a bed. And they started a pick line. And from there, they started antibiotics, which slightly helped. But that's the thing. Everything always just slightly helps. It just brings it down, but never away. And in that time, there was unfortunately a lot of errors, which is, is tough right now because everyone is so stressed and so overworked that I was given, you know, chlorhexamine um, wash when they did the pick line. And unfortunately, that blew my arm up into allergic reaction. I got phlebitis of the arm. Like it was an absolute disaster. We get home, we find out there's not enough nurses to maintain the, the pick line as like an at home thing. So we had to drive 45 minutes back and forth via the hospital. And we're still trying to make videos. We're still streaming and I'm trying to recover from this. And uh, it is a disaster. And eventually I go to get my booster and they're like, hey, be very careful that you don't mix up these symptoms because you get a little fever from the booster, but you don't want to mask increasing or worsening symptoms of the infection. So I'm like, I will keep a very good tab on things. I get a little, a little feverish, a little sore run down from the booster. And then I'm, then I'm right as rain again. And then right after that, I'm hit again with a major fever and down. I'm like, I don't think this is the booster. This is the infection. The next day I'm going down further and further. I'm starting to hallucinate. I'm not myself. I'm, I'm just in a really bad spot. My parents are like, how are we going to get him to the emergency room? And I'm like, I'm fine. It's okay. Just give me a day. Give me a day. Where's Jelly? Let me pet Jelly. It's getting worse. I thought Jelly was a dog that was attacking me. It was it was bad. And eventually they're like, we can't get him out. He's he's getting so bad that they had to call 911. 911 had to just scoop me with a wheelbarrow out of my bed and bring me to the emergency room. They brought me to recess bay. They stabilized me. They take some blood, eventually come back in. They're like, you have 90 neutrophils and neutropenia starts at 1500 and you have 90. Like normal, I was like 2,500 and you have 90. I'm like, oh no. And so I had a major neutropenic fevers 
and it took quite a few days in the hospital to recover, eventually discharged on Thanksgiving. They removed the PIC line, they stopped antibiotics, and that's where we are today. And where we are today is surgery. What they're gonna do is they're gonna take this tube out and, re and fully replace it in a new site, create a new track, cut open that intestine, put in a whole new setup, and then let this side over here heal via you know wound care. I'll probably be back on a PIC line for antibiotics for an extended period of time. And then while I'm out, they're gonna do some other procedures because, well, he's out, why don't we do some more stuff? So they're gonna do a colonoscopy and an endoscopy. So yeah, it is gonna be an absolute nightmare. But if we call back to my old coach, 10% is what happens to you, 90% is how you react to it. And I'm trying to react to it in a positive way that this is gonna be a literal nightmare. But if I can get over this hump, we can get back to making videos. We can get back to streaming properly again. I want to stream. I've got another channel that I want to do fun stuff with. Lego streams. Like there's just so much I want to do. And this has been a hindrance on top of all that. This is like this the infection and there's some other stuff. And then my overarching health stuff and all of this compounding together has, re has really put me in a spot where I just don't feel myself. And I really hope that this is the thing that helps that and then we can get back to being normal, we can get back to making videos, we can make to streaming, and yeah. So I cannot thank you guys enough for being patient with me through the course of this year. Um, everything I did in season eight, I loved and was passionate about it, but I was never able to like fully see my vision. Like the swaggins and all that stuff, I wanted to do that, but I wanted to build my mega base on the mountains, the floating city, like, the, the tycoon mansion. That's why I joke so much about this being my starter base, because I never got to my mega base because this infection kept me from doing what I wanted to do. So hopefully we can get over this. We can get to season nine. I got such a cool idea that's so passionate to me. I have so much plan for it that I just want to get over this and be able to make this for you guys. So thank you once again for the support. I very much appreciate it. Jelly appreciates it too. And uh, I will see you guys later. Hopefully stronger, more powerful. But anyway, we'll see you later, guys. Goodbye.